In lesson three, we redirected this search widget successfully. So I can type in a search term and it goes to a forward slash search. This does not yet exist though. So let's go ahead and create that. What I'm going to do is come inside the blog and just use this index.astro as a template here. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this. And then I'm going to call this search and we'll move it out of the blog folder into the pages directory. So as soon as I do that and then save it, now over here, this should work, all right? And it just looks the exact same as my blog right now, but we will update that here in just a second. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and strip out this post because we're not going to be loading that on the page, which also means I can get rid of this right here. And eventually we'll also get rid of this as well. Now you can of course stylize this however you want. For now, this is the way I'm gonna do it just to keep things as simple as possible. So since we remove the post, let's also strip out looping over those posts. And now I wanna do a couple things. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this site all here. That's all fine. We could update this and say like uh, it's search or something like that, but we're gonna actually update this in a second another way. So I wanna modify one thing and add two others. So by modifying it, what I mean is I wanna add in an ARIA label. This will basically set this off as a region and say that we want it to be about our search results. Next, I'm gonna add a paragraph with an ID of search readout. This will be where we read out whatever the search term happens to be. Then finally, I wanna add in a side and we're gonna add another little search form right here where you can search on the actual page. Now this will be sufficiently different that we're gonna copy a lot of the code over here, but we are going to update it for our use cases over here. So I'm gonna come in here and actually just remove that and paste that in there. And I'm gonna grab this class and apply it to the aside. And I actually don't want this to be a form because I'm not gonna submit this. I'm just gonna handle the input whenever it changes. Now, because we use the class of form to style everything, everything should still look exactly as we expect, except we're gonna handle the functionality different. So if I come in here and start typing here on the search route, nothing's gonna happen because again, it's not a form, so it won't submit. We're gonna handle this a different way. The first thing I wanna do though, is when we land on this route, I wanna see, hey, is there any query that's already existing? So we're gonna write a bunch of JavaScript here, and I'm gonna do this inside of a script tag. You could also import this and have this as a separate file, which probably would be best use case, but just to kind of keep things as simple as possible, all the rest of the code we're gonna write in this tutorial is gonna be exactly in this script tag. So to start with, we need to grab a few selectors. I'm gonna grab the search selector. We'll just call this document.query selector. And what I wanna select is anything with the ID of search. You can see that that is this right here, this input. Now notice when I save this, that it actually moved this up inside my body. And that's because the HTML tag actually needs to wrap all this. And the other page, uh, it was just a single component here where I actually have like an entire HTML page declared. I also need one other thing and that would be my search readout. And that's gonna be very similar to this, just search readout. Now with those two things declared, what I can do is run an event on the window itself that after it loads, I could say, if there's anything here, I wanna display it right here. So let's go ahead and come down here and say like event listeners, just to keep things organized. And here on the window, I'm gonna add an event listener. This will be DOM content loaded. And let's run this inline here. So whenever the DOM content is loaded and maybe let's move this over just a touch, I wanna first of all, see if there are any URL params. Now the browser gives us a way to actually get the search params from the current window. And I can do this in a couple ways, but one of the ways I can do it is URL search params. That would just be window.location. Let's go ahead and just console log this to see what we're getting. So when I do that, you're gonna see that I have a little readout here from console ninja. It gives me my search params size. All right, so that's everything here. What I want is not that, but dot search. And off the end of this, I wanna get the query param like that. Now, when I come over here, you're gonna see I'm getting search, which is the thing I actually wrote. So maybe let's change this uh, just to make sure that we're getting what we think. So let's say C and I'm getting C right here. Okay, cool. So I'm actually getting what I want. Now what I wanna do is use that to update the text inside of here. We'll do that by setting the search.value to whatever those URL query params are. You can see as soon as I save it, that's what I'm getting here. I'm getting C right in here because that's what's up here. If I were to retype this here and hit enter, you'll see that now I get all this as well. Now because this is usually coming from the home page, there's no malicious code if they entered it there, but you could technically come in here and add your own thing. And then you see that all that gets displayed right here. So I actually want to do the same kind of purification here as well. So let's go ahead and add an import here and we'll import Dom purify from Dom purify. And then once again, let's go ahead and wrap all of this Dom purify dot sanitize, and that will sanitize our input. And when I land on this page, in addition to showing whatever the search is, I want them to be able to change it quickly. So one thing we could do is add search.focus. That will focus the browser. So if I refresh, you see it's just automatically focused on that input. 
There's two other things I want to change briefly. One is to add the actual readout of whatever we're searching right here. And the second thing would be to update the title here in the browser. So we're going to update those with two different functions we're going to write. One we'll call update document title, and we'll pass that our URL params. And we'll add one more that we're going to call update search readout. So let's do these one at a time. So update document title does not exist yet, so it is properly yelling at us. But let's come in here and add some functions. We'll say function, update document title, and this will take in whatever search we pass it, that URL params. All right, so in this function right here, what I want to do is update the document.title. And I want to set that to whatever the search happens to be. So you can see here that that's exactly what it does. That's not quite right though, is it? What I want to do is say, if there is a search, then update it like this, otherwise do something else. So we can do that quickly here with a little ternary. So if there's a search, what do I want it to read? Well, in backticks here, I'm going to add search results for, and then here we'll add in quotation marks, the search. Otherwise, I probably just want this to read something like search the blog. Now, of course, on page load, it's going to actually change it up so I could change the actual text up here to start like that too. So I could say that this would be something like uh, search the blog and that way it doesn't have to update. But as I live type here, eventually it will get to a point where there are no search results. There, I also want it just to say search the, the blog. So that's why I have a ternary here. So it, it kind of accounts for both of those use cases. All right, let's also now create this update search readout. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this function down as well. We'll just say update search readout. Now, in this case, I don't want to update the document title. Instead, what I want to update is the search readout. Now, we can do this in a couple different ways, but to be safe, even though we've purified it, I actually also want to just set this as the text content. That way, we're not introducing HTML that's been typed in by the user. Now, here you'll notice because I've got no search, if I just leave this the same, it's going to say search the blog down here. That's not exactly what I want. I actually want this to be an empty string. And over here, I'll say search results for, and that should be just fine as well. If I do come in here and I add something, whatever this happens to be, you'll see I get search results for, and then eventually we will display those below. In addition to that, my document title has been updated, and now this text also reads the same. And when I refresh, you'll notice that I can immediately start typing because that is focused. Now we've already done all this work. We can actually do a lot of the same things on change on that search itself. So let's come in here. We're gonna add the search right here. Remember we grabbed access to the actual search input up top here. So down below, what we're gonna do is not check on the DOM content loaded, but on input. So whenever this changes, I wanna actually grab the search term that's being typed in. In this case, let's change this up and this up and this up and this up to search term. And I'm gonna dom.purify, not the whole stuff from the URL but the actual search dot value. With that said, I want to update the document title. I want to update the readout. This is on text as I start to type, but I don't need to do these two things. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. So now if I were to come in here and I start to type, you're going to notice that this updates, this updates, and this updates. So all this updates live as I type. And if I go all the way to nothing, it doesn't show anything down here. And this just says search the blog. And that's why we added this and this as options. All right, so as we type now, this is live because this is actually embedded in the URL, I can send this to somebody else and they'll get the exact same search results as I did. Now, when we type, not only do we want to update all these visual things, but we actually want to fetch and see, hey, let's grab our data from our blog and then start to process it. So in the next video, what we're going to do is create a JSON file of all of our blog posts.